There are 10 job search mistakes I see people make all the time, and I will fully admit some of them I was guilty of myself when I was job searching. So today we're going to talk about what they are, and I want you to vow to never make these job search mistakes again. Let's get started. This is your first time here. My name is Cassandra and I help motivated professionals build their careers and businesses through practical tips to gain career confidence. Let's talk about these job search mistakes. If you are looking for a new job, the first mistake I see people make all the time is not blocking time on their calendar to work on their job search. I was guilty of this back in the day. There was a time period where I was really wanting a new job and I would tell everybody, oh yeah, I'm looking for a new job, I'm looking for a new job. But I never set aside dedicated time. It was very hit or miss when I would work on this job search. So some nights I would come home from work and be like, oh, I guess I should look at, you know, job, job, uh, open positions. Wow. I can't think of words y'all open positions online. And I would just voraciously save positions. And then if something looked really good, maybe I would sit down and like fill out the application, send my resume. I knew I was supposed to meet with people, but I didn't really know how do I do that when I'm working and I just didn't investigate the way I should. And it really prolonged the job search. If you instead will figure out one hour even that you can work on your job search each week, you're going to go farther faster. I think if you want to be real aggressive, we probably need to find at least one hour a day to work on our job search. But the key thing is block some time. As much as I'd love you to do one hour a day, I totally understand that some of you are in situations where you're like, I'm already working hours at a job that fully exhausts me by the end of the day. I have family, I have friends, I have other commitments. I can dedicate an hour or two on a Saturday morning and that's it. Your situation is your situation. But whatever the time is, dedicate and commit to working on your job search during a scheduled appointment you've made with yourself. Problem number two, only applying online. Now I talk about this a lot, but it needs, it bears repeating. You cannot just apply online for a job. Applying online only feels productive. It feels like, oh look, I applied to five jobs today or 20 jobs this week. I challenge you, how many of those people called you back? I'm guessing zero. If a bunch of you, a bunch of them called you back, I'm betting that they weren't really great quality jobs. You need to be networking with people as much as you are applying online. In fact, my rule is 70% of your time in your job search should be spent networking and 30% should be applying online. This is just math from the fact that 70% of jobs come from the hidden job market, meaning they were jobs found through other people. And so 70% of your time then should be dedicated to that. So if you are going to job search 10 hours a week, just using 10 hours for easy math, if you're going to job search 10 hours a week, seven of those hours should be following up with people, emailing people, getting coffee with people or Zoom interviews. Um, checking in again, and three hours should be applying online. Okay, job search mistake number three, not telling anyone that you're looking for a job. So this comes up a lot. We're scared to tell people we're looking. We're afraid it'll get back to our boss. What will people think of us? Just for some reason, it's something people don't share. Or even now I'm being held accountable. And what if six months go by and I still haven't found something? You know, you're not going to find something if people don't know how to help you. So make sure you're letting people know you are job searching. You are looking for your next move. Now, mistake number four is being too generic when you tell people that you are looking. Now, I made a whole separate video about this. I will put it in the description box below. But when you were talking to people about your job search, don't be afraid to get specific on what you were looking for. The more specific you are, the more people can help you. So if you say, I wanna work in social media or some sort of digital advertising in the automotive industry, now I know exactly who to put you with. And even if I don't know someone, now I know kind of the two categories and I can say, well, I don't know someone in automotive, but I have a friend who does it in the food industry, etc." cetera. So the, actually the more you put yourself in a box, the easier it is for people to take you out of it. So don't be afraid to be specific. 
Okay, mistake number five, staying too open. Depending on how hard a situation your current job is, you might be like, I'm willing to take a step down or I'm willing to go work in that industry that I don't really care about, that's not, not my main focus. I wanna challenge you on that. Be picky. You don't wanna be too open that you end up going, what is it? From the frying pot to the fire, from the frying pan, frying pot, whoo, frying pan to the fire. Like you don't want it to get worse. Fun fact, this is a mistake I have made. You wanna make sure that whatever that next move is, is still within your overall career goals. So while yes, be open to opportunities that maybe you hadn't considered, don't take just anything. Don't apply online to just anything. You know, if you're at an entry level area and you're like, oh, I really want to work at Disney, you know that you're going to get an assistant job first. But don't apply for the assistant job in the finance department if what you really want to do is marketing. Okay? Job search mistake number six, only looking at big companies. So, a lot of times we all tend to look at the large corporations, the big companies in our town, because that's what we know, right? And I'm not saying you shouldn't look at them, but don't only look at them. Start doing some research on what are some of the smaller companies in your area that you could possibly work for. Or just be open that if somebody meets you and says, oh, you know, I have a friend who works at this kind of smaller company, you might be a good fit for it. Just go to have the conversation, like see what they're about. What I find is a lot of times at some of the smaller companies, you actually can get paid better than at the larger companies. You also might get more experience, be over more, get to manage more, take more ownership and responsibility. So don't only look at large corporations. Often that's where we start because that's what we know, but use that to then kind of figure out what are similar companies in my area that might be a bit smaller. You can use LinkedIn for this. Mistake number seven, posting your resume on job boards like Indeed and then expecting the recruiters and the hiring managers to just come to you. They are not going to flock to you, y'all. Now, if you wanna post your resume on some of those places, it's fine because we should be using every avenue that we possibly can. But I've met with some people that are like, I posted my resume on this job board, so like, about how many people will I hear from? Mm, probably zero. Like recruiters are not always going into those places and looking. LinkedIn is a different matter. Post your resume on LinkedIn, fill out your LinkedIn profile to the utmost so that they can get a great picture of who you are. That does get used. But just thinking that you can post your resume online and passively wait for companies to come to you, not gonna happen. Mistake number eight while job searching is not building your personal brand. So the best way to get them to start coming to you is by creating content to show them why they should come to you. So posting your resume isn't gonna do it, but recruiters and hiring managers will learn who you are when you start putting yourself out there. So start creating content on LinkedIn, revolving around your industry or your passions or what you wanna do in the future. You know, you don't have to be an industry expert. You can be a curator of great content, but putting yourself out there, building your brand of this is who I am, these are the things I care about, this is what I'm skilled at, is going to draw people to you and bring in possible job openings that they want you to try for. Mistake number nine is not researching your value and what a company would value you at. So what I mean by this is you need to figure out for what you do, for what you're looking to do, What's your value? What kind of salary should you be getting? So this could be based on your experience, based on some other sort of, not just your experience in the industry, but do you have some other additional experience that could contribute to why you should get a certain price? Talked with other people in the industry, what sort of salary are they getting and why? And then figure out what your value is. But then always research the company and see, do they value that position? at the salary I want? Or do they think it should be down here? You need to make sure those two things match before we start really applying. In fact, a lot of people give me a lot of grief in the comments on my 10 things you should never say in an interview video when I say you don't talk about money. 
Now, disclaimer, it's a case by case basis. It's not that you never talk about money, but part of the reason I say you don't talk about money in initial interviews, unless the recruiter brings it up, is because you should have already done your research to make sure you should be somewhat in alignment and not going for some like far-fetched price, either higher or lower. Okay, number 10, mistake 10, you don't follow up. <sighs> A lot of people do informational interviews, right? They were brave, they reached out to somebody, they said, hey, I would love to take you to coffee. They have the coffee, or maybe right now the Zoom call, you chat, maybe they send the thank you, and then they never talk to the person again. Y'all, you need to follow up with those you met in the past. So start making it a rule that every day you go into LinkedIn and you find someone you haven't talked to in a while, and you send them a message saying, just checking in, I hope you're doing well. You know, when you get a chance, let me know how you're doing. Do the same thing on your phone. Scroll in your texts, find people you haven't talked to in a bit, send them a text saying, thought of you today, hope everything's going great, let me know what you're up to. Very simple, but you need to be following up with people so that they keep you top of mind for when a position opens. So those are 10 tips to help you with your job search. If you need more job search help, I have a new get your job search in gear guide. It's three checklists for you. It's the overall job search checklist, kind of hitting all the things you need to do in your search, a resume checklist and a cover letter checklist because yes, cover letters are not dead. So you need to write a great cover letter. So you can get all three of those in this bundle for free in the description box below. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.